The golden hues of the setting sun bathed the suburban neighborhood in a warm, inviting glow as I finally pulled into our driveway. A sigh of relief escaped my lips as I shut off the car's engine. It had been a long, tiring day at work, but the thought of reuniting with my beloved wife Amy filled me with a renewed sense of energy. Amy and I had been married for five blissful years, and our love had grown stronger with each passing day. However, a cloud of unease hung over our relationship, stemming from a series of mysterious and unsettling incidents involving her previous bosses. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something inherently wrong with the way these men had treated her. Today, I was returning home with a sense of hope, albeit tinged with caution. Amy had recently started a new job, and her new boss, Mike Armstrong, was coming over for dinner. I wanted to believe that this time, things would be different, that Amy had finally found a boss who respected her boundaries and treated her with the dignity she deserved. With a bouquet of deep crimson roses in hand, their petals soft and velvety, I made my way up to our front door. These roses were Amy's favorite, and I hoped they would bring a smile to her face. The scent of freshly cut grass lingered in the air, and as I reached for the doorknob, a wave of anticipation washed over me. The door creaked open, and there she stood, framed by the warm light of our home. Amy's eyes sparkled with joy as she greeted me with open arms. Her fiery red hair tumbled down her shoulders, and her radiant smile lit up the room. Ron, she exclaimed, her voice filled with genuine happiness. You're home early. I missed you so much today. I embraced her tightly, feeling her warmth and the reassuring beat of her heart against mine. I missed you too, Amy, I whispered into her ear my voice filled with love and longing. I've got a little surprise for you. Amy's eyes widened with curiosity as I presented her with a bouquet of crimson roses. She delicately accepted them, her fingers brushing over the petals. Oh, Ron, they're beautiful, she exclaimed, her face lighting up even more. Thank you so much. I love them. With our embrace lingering, I couldn't help but feel a sense of optimism. Perhaps this dinner with her new boss, Mike Armstrong, would mark a turning point in our lives, a chance for us to leave behind the shadows of the past and step into a brighter, more hopeful future. The worn ambience of our living room, with its soft lighting and plush furniture, contrasted sharply with a knot of tension coiled within me. Amy and I had been looking forward to a quiet, intimate dinner at home. But something about the evening felt off-kilter. It wasn't just the unsettling incidents involving Amy's previous bosses that had left me wary. It was the sense of unease that seemed to emanate from the very walls of our home. As I stepped into the living room, the crimson bouquet I brought for Amy in one hand, I was taken aback by an unexpected sight. There, standing in the center of the room, was Mike Armstrong. He held a crystal wine glass in one hand, and wore a self-assured smile that didn't sit well with me. Ron, my man, Mike exclaimed, his voice dripping with an unsettling familiarity. He extended his hand toward me, and I reluctantly shook it. I hope you don't mind me coming over early. Amy and I were just having a little chat. My unease grew as I glanced at Amy, who appeared equally surprised by Mike's early arrival. She tried to hide her discomfort, but her eyes betrayed a hint of anxiety. Mike, she said with a forced smile, I didn't expect you to be here so soon. Mike's grin widened as he placed his wine glass on a nearby table. I'm a man who likes to be punctual, Amy, he replied, his eyes never leaving her. I hope you don't mind if I help myself to a glass of wine. I exchange a quick, uncertain glance with Amy before responding. Of course, Imiki, make yourself at home. As Amy and I settle it onto the couch, Miki joined us, his presence dominating the room. The atmosphere felt charged, and I couldn't shake the nagging feeling that something was amiss. It was as though Mike's smirking confidence masked an underlying motive that I couldn't shake the nagging feeling that something was amiss. 
It was as though Mike's smirking confidence masked an underlying motive that I couldn't quite decipher. I tried to engage in small talk, discussing our respective days and attempting to break the ice. But Mike seemed intent on maintaining an air of authority. His gaze was fixated on Amy, and the way he leaned in closer to her made my discomfort intensify. Ron, he finally said, turning his attention to me. I have to say you're a lucky man to have such a beautiful wife. I forced a polite smile, my unease growing. Thank you, Mike. I couldn't agree more. Mike's gaze never wavered from Amy as he continued. And Amy here, she's quite a catch, isn't she? Amy shifted uncomfortably beside me, her eyes darting between Mike and me. Mike, please, she said, her voice tinged with unease. Let's not make this evening awkward. But Mike seemed unfazed, his self-assured grin never faltering. Awkward, Amy? I don't think so. I believe in being honest and straightforward. In fact, I have something to discuss with you both later. The ominous undertone in his words sent a chill down my spine, and I exchanged another concerned glance with Amy. Whatever Mike had in mind, it was clear that this dinner was about to take a turn for the worse. The tension in the room seemed to tighten like a noose as we sat there, Mike Armstrong's unsettling presence looming over us. My heart pounded in my chest and I exchanged worried glances with Amy, silently communicating our shared discomfort. Finally, unable to bear the suffocating atmosphere any longer, I cleared my throat and mustered the courage to address Mike. Mike, I began cautiously. You mentioned there was something you wanted to discuss with us? Mike leaned back in his chair, swirling the wine in his glass before setting it down with deliberate care. His eyes born to mine, and his lips curled into a chilling smirk. Indeed, Ron, he said, his voice dripping with an unsettling confidence. I have a proposition for both of you. Amy's eyes widened with a mixture of surprise and trepidation, her fingers tightening around her wine glass. I braced myself for what was to come, my unease intensifying with every passing moment. I want to sleep with Amy, Mike stated bluntly, his words hanging in the air like a heavy fog. And I want you, Ron, to watch. The room fell into a shocked silence, the weight of Mike's proposition pressing down on us like an unbearable burden. Amy's face paled, and she looked at me with a mixture of disbelief and horror. I felt a surge of anger and protectiveness rise within me, but I knew I had to remain composed. Mike, I said through gritted teeth, my voice quivering with anger. You must be out of your mind. That's not something we would ever consider. Mike's smirk remained unshaken, and he leaned in closer, his eyes never leaving mine. Ron, he purred. I think you underestimate the thrill of it. Imagine the passion, the intensity. It would be an experience you'd never forget, Amy interjected, her voice trembling with indignation. Mike, this is absolutely inappropriate and disrespectful to both of us. How could you even suggest such a thing? Mike's arrogance seemed to grow with each passing moment, as if he relished our discomfort. Amy, my dear, I believe in pushing boundaries and exploring new horizons. I'm offering you both an opportunity to spice up your marriage. I clenched my fists, struggling to contain my anger. Mike, you need to leave. Now. He leaned back in his chair, his eyes still locked onto mine, his smirk never fading. Think about it, Ron. I'll be waiting for your answer. As Mike rose from his seat and made his way toward the door, the room seemed to exhale a collective sigh of relief. Amy and I were left in stunned silence, the gravity of Mike's shocking revelation hanging heavy in the air. I can't believe he would even suggest such a thing, Amy finally said, her voice quivering with a mixture of anger and disbelief. I took her hand in mine, offering what little comfort I could. We won't let him get away with this, Amy. We'll find a way to handle this situation together. The unsettling revelation from Mike Armstrong had left an indelible mark on our evening, casting a long shadow over our home. Amy and I were left grappling with the shock of his proposition, our sense of security shattered. But as the night wore on, 
a simmering anger began to replace the initial shock. I knew I had to confront Mike. I excused myself from the living room, leaving Amy behind, her worried eyes silently pleading with me to handle the situation. In my man cave, a dimly lit sanctuary adorned with my collection of military memorabilia and knives, I contemplated my next move. With a deep breath, I decided to reveal my military background to Mike, a part of my past that I had rarely shared with anyone. I returned to the living room, my demeanor transformed. The unease that had once lingered in my eyes had now been replaced with a steely resolve. Mike sat on the couch, seemingly unruffled by my earlier exit. His smug grin remained firmly in place. Back so soon, Ron? I locked eyes with him, my voice low and firm. Mike, I need you to understand something. I'm very protective of Amy. You've crossed the line tonight, and I won't stand for it. Very protective of Amy. You've crossed the line tonight, and I won't stand for it. Mike raised an eyebrow, feigning innocence. Crossed the line. I thought we were just having a little fun. I continued my tone, unmoivering. You should also know that I have a particular set of skills, Mike. I was a sniper in the military, and I have a deep appreciation for precision and accuracy. The military and I have a deep appreciation for precision and accuracy. A flicker of unease passed over Mike's face, though he tried to hide it. Is that so, Ron? What are you trying to say? I gestured subtly toward the collection of knives on display in my man cave each gleaming with a deadly edge. I have a passion for knives, Mike. I know how to use them. And if you ever threaten my marriage again, if you ever come near Amy with such intentions, well, let's just say I'm not afraid to get up close and personal. The threat was implicit, but Mike couldn't ignore the seriousness in my voice. His smug demeanor wavered, and he swallowed hard, his bravado beginning to crumble. I wavered, and he swallowed hard his bravado beginning to crumble. I think it's time for you to leave, Mike, I stated firmly, my eyes never leaving his. With a nod, he rose from the couch, his earlier confidence replaced by unease. As he made his way to the front door, I couldn't help but feel a small sense of satisfaction. Mike may have entered our home with audacious intentions, but he was leaving with a newfound understanding of the boundaries he had crossed. As I closed the door behind him, I knew that the battle was far from over. Amy and I had a difficult road ahead, but I was determined to protect our marriage at all costs. The tension in our home lingered long after Mike Armstrong's departure. Like an unwelcome guest overstaying its welcome, Amy and I were left to grapple with the disturbing proposition he had made, our dinner plans derailed by the shocking revelation. We sat at the dining table, our plates of untouched food growing cold. The silence between us was heavy, pregnant with the unspoken words that hung in the air. I couldn't help but glance at the recording device hidden in my pocket, a constant reminder of the evidence we held against Mike. Amy finally broke the silence, her voice trembling with a mix of anger and disbelief. Ron, I can't believe he had the audacity to say something like that. It's disgusting. I reached across the table and placed a reassuring hand on hers. I know Amy. What he did was completely unacceptable. We'll figure out how to handle this together. But even as I spoke those words, the weight of the situation bore down on me. Mike's proposition had shaken the foundation of our marriage, and I knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges. With a heavy sigh, I decided it was time to reveal the evidence we had against Mike. I retrieved the recording device from my pocket and placed it on the table. Amy, I said, my voice steady. I recorded our conversation with Mike. I wanted to make sure we had evidence of what he said. Amy's eyes widened as she looked at the small device. You recorded it? I nodded. Yes, it's our insurance, Amy in case we need it. As she pressed the play button, Micah's unsettling proposition filled the room once more. Amy's face contorted with a mixture of anger and disgust as she listened. 
How could he say such things? She muttered, her voice barely above a whisper. I leaned in closer, my heart aching for my wife. Amy, we can't let him get away with this. We need to confront him and make sure he knows the consequences of his actions. Amy nodded in agreement, her resolve strengthening. You're right, Ron. He needs to be held accountable for what he's done. With our determination renewed, we pushed our half-eaten dinners aside and began to strategize. We needed a plan to confront Mikey and ensure that he faced the consequences of his inappropriety behavior. The evening that had begun with so much promise had taken an unexpected and troubling turn, but we were determined to emerge from it stronger than ever. In the days that followed the disturbing dinner with Mike Armstrong, our home felt like a battleground, our marriage under siege from the unsettling proposition he had made. Amy and I were determined to confront him, but before we did, I knew I needed to gather more information about Mike's past and his motivations. I spent hours researching Mike, combing through social media profiles, company records, and any available online information. My background as a sniper had instilled in me a sense of meticulousness and determination, and I was determined to uncover the truth. One evening, as Amy and I sat in our living room, I shared some of my findings with her. Amy, I began, I've been digging into Mike Armstrong's history and what I've found is troubling. Amy turned her gaze toward me, her eyes filled with curiosity. What did you find, Ron? I leaned forward my laptop open on the coffee table. Mike has a history of infidelity in his previous relationships. It seems he has a pattern of pursuing women, especially those in vulnerable positions. Amy's brow furrowed with concern. That's unsettling. It sounds like he's done this before. I nodded in agreement. Yes, and there's more. It turns out that he narrowly escapes severe consequences in one of his previous relationships. He was involved with a group called the Marriage Mutual Insurance Society. Amy's eyes widened with surprise. The Marriage Mutual Insurance Society? What's that? I explained. It's a secretive group that takes it upon themselves to ensure the fidelity of married individuals. They organize punishments for those who stray from their vows. Mike managed to evade their punishment, but it seems he's continued his questionable behavior. Ami's expression shifted from surprise to a mixture of anger and concern. So he's not just a boss with a wandering eye. He's a repeat offender who knows how to avoid consequences. I nodded solemnly. Exactly, Amy. We need to be cautious in how we handle this situation. Confronting him directly may not be enough. We have to make him understand that his actions have consequences. As we continued to discuss our plan, it became clear that our course of action needed to involve more than just confronting Mike. We needed to expose his behavior and ensure that he faced the repercussions he had managed to avoid in the past. With newfound determination, we set out to gather more evidence and devise a strategy to confront Mike Armstrong. Our investigation had revealed disturbing truths, and we were prepared to do whatever it took to protect our Mariagi and ensure that he faced the consequences of his actions. The days leading up to the confrontation with Micah Armstrong were fraught with tension and anticipation. Amy and I had gathered enough evidence to expose his inappropriate behavior, but we knew that confronting him would be a delicate and crucial step in bringing about a resolution— one evening, as we sat in our living room rehearsing the conversation we would have with Miki, Amy looked at me with a mix of determination and worry. Are we sure about this, Ron? Confronting him means there's no turning back. I took her hand in mine, offering reassurance. Amy, we can't let him continue to threaten our marriage and the well-being of others. It's the right thing to do. Amy nodded, her resolve firm. You're right, Ron. We need to put an end to this. The night arrived when we would finally confront Mike. As he walked through our front door, his confident demeanor betrayed no hint of the turmoil within our home. We invited him into the living room where the atmosphere was charged with a sense of purpose. Mike settled onto the couch, 
seemingly oblivious to the gravity of the situation. So, what's on your minds? He asked casually. I exchanged a meaningful glance with Amy before speaking. Mike, we've learned a lot about your history and your involvement with the Marriage Mutual Insurance Society. We know about your past behavior and how you managed to escape consequences. Mike's smug grin wavered for a moment, but he quickly recovered. I see you've been doing some digging, Ron. Impressive, Amy chimed in, her voice steady. Mike, your behavior is unacceptable, not just toward me, but toward countless others you've wronged. We won't let you continue down this path. Mike feigned innocence, though his confidence had begun to crumble. What are you going to do, Amy? Ron, you can't prove anything. That's when I revealed the evidence we had gathered, including the recording of his shocking proposition. As the recording played, Mike's face turned ashen, and his bravado dissolved into a fearful silence. Amy looked at him with a mix of anger and determination. Mike, you need to understand that your actions have consequences. We won't let you continue to hurt others. I leaned in closer, my voice firm. Mike, we could expose your behavior to your workplace, your friends, and your family. We could ensure that everyone knows the truth about who you really are. Mike's eyes darted around the room, his confidence shattered. What do you want from me? Amy spoke with unwavering resolve. We want you to promise that you'll change your ways, that you'll never again use your position to exploit or manipulate others, I added. And if we ever hear of you causing harm to anyone else, we won't hesitate to expose your actions. Hear of you causing harm to anyone else, we won't hesitate to expose your actions. You'll face the consequences you've so far avoided. Mike, now thoroughly humiliated and fearful, nodded frantically. I promise I'll change. I'll never do this again. Please just don't ruin my life. With our point made and Mike thoroughly shaken, Amy and I felt a sense of resolution wash over us. We had confronted him, exposed his behavior, and ensured that he faced the fear of consequences. As he left our home that evening, his confidence replaced by fear, we couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction and closure. Our marriage, once threatened by the shadow of Amy's past bosses, had emerged stronger than ever. We had faced the darkness head-on and emerged in the light, ready to move forward with the knowledge that we could protect our love and the well-being of others from those who sought to harm it. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.